Hey guys, Tonic here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of the new Fallout 76 Nuka World on Tour update. This new update brought the Nuka World on Tour Traveling Roadshow to Appalachia, and it brought a decent amount of new stuff into the game. There are three new events, a new regional boss, a new functional arcade, free cam mode for building, a new Fallout First perk, and of course a ton of new rewards. There is a lot to cover with this update, so without further ado, let's get right into it. First up, let's talk about the fairgrounds. Just west of Lake Reynolds in the Ash Sheep region, you will find Nuka World on tour, and pretty much all of the new stuff that came with this update is located here. All of the new events, characters, the new cocade, and the new world boss will spawn here. And honestly, I think they did a great job with the area. It's super fun to explore, and just walking around you will find neat little signs and ticket booths and all sorts of Nuka Cola themed stuff. Now, I really like that they put it in the Ash Heap region. Before this update, there really wasn't a whole lot going on here. After completing a lot of the quests, most players would just come here for the Rusty Pick and maybe the Encrypted event if someone would start it. But now this update brought a ton of life to the area. There's a lot more going on, and it's really cool to see so many players here. Next up, let's talk about the three new events. Spin the Wheel, Most Wanted, and the Tunnel of Love. Personally, I like Spin the Wheel the most, but they are all pretty good. Spin the wheel will have you just spin a giant wheel, then it's going to select a random challenge. Then once you are done with that challenge, you get to spin it again, and this is going to repeat for five rounds. If you get through all five rounds, and you end up completing the event, and I really like how they did this one. Every time you play this event, it's going to be slightly different. I've had times where we get a ton of red challenges, and those are like little boss fights. And then there have been times where we get a ton of the blue and yellow challenges, where you have to fight smaller enemies or complete random tasks. I absolutely love the random factor with this event, and I can see it being enjoyable for a long time. And now for the second event, we have Most Wanted. This event is going to take place in a part of the fairgrounds that is decorated up to look like an old western town, and you will pretty much just act as bandits. You will have to rob the townsfolk and deposit the buckaroos that you stole into a getaway wagon. Then you just have to defend that wagon against waves of deputy robots and eventually the sheriff. Again, I really do like this event, it's pretty solid and it's extremely fun to do, but my only complaint is that it can be pretty easy with a large group, and there really isn't a whole lot of enemies during the defending parts of the event, and the boss can get killed pretty fast. But other than that, I really do like it. And then lastly, we have the Tunnel of Love event, and this one is neat, you pretty much just have to help fix a ride by finding some heart decor and placing it where it needs to go, and then fixing the broken tracks along the ride. And while you are doing this, you are going to be fighting waves of mole miners and mole rats, and even a glowing deathclaw. Eventually, at the end of the event, you will end up building a robot bride and watch a wedding, and it all just flows really well. Now let's talk about the new boss. This new regional boss, the Ultrasight Titan, is pretty awesome to fight, and it does have a short storyline somewhat similar to the Earl Williams questline. You will talk to Pete, the fair's mechanic, and he will send you on a quest to go and get some parts, and he will mention a large beast that he believes is real. Going over to that location, it's been changed a bit to have some Ultrasight popping up out of the ground, and you can explore the area and search for clues about the monster. Then you just have to nuke that area, and it will force the boss fight to start. The storyline is pretty short, but it is nice that we got one. I like having some background information about the Titan, and searching for clues was pretty fun. But the boss fight itself is amazing in my opinion, it's fast paced, chaotic, and honestly sort of challenging with a small group. You will have to destroy some crystals using melee attacks and that will force the titan up from the ground. Then the boss fight will begin and it will slam the ground doing tons of damage and it will spawn some more crystals that you have to destroy to make him vulnerable to ranged attacks. Then once you get its health down a bit, it will reposition and start a new combat phase. And during all of this, you are going to be getting swarmed by mole rats and mole miners, and it is just plain fun. There's loads of enemies on the screen, the combat phases are neat, I really like how it goes underground and changes positions, and I really love how we have to use the melee attacks to destroy the crystals before we can actually shoot it. I think that was a nice touch. Now with that being said, I have heard that there are some performance issues with this boss fight on console, and I can totally see why, even on my PC my frames dip a considerable amount during this, there's lots of explosions and people running around and enemies on screen, so that is a slight issue and hopefully in the future they can optimize it a bit better, but besides that, I really do like everything about this boss fight. Up next, let's quickly talk about the new Cade. Now there isn't really a whole lot to it, it's pretty much just a little place at the fairgrounds where you can go and play some games, but it is really neat. All of the games are playable and some are actually fun. 
My favorite is probably going to be the Nuka Zapper Race because you can actually play it with some other people. And after completing the games, you will earn points, and then you can spend these points on rewards. Now there's some basic rewards like ammo, outfits, and smaller items, but then there is also some bigger rewards that you can save up for, like the games themselves and other camp plans. Overall, I really like the Nuka Cade. Again, it isn't honestly much in terms of content, but I find it really fun, and I think it adds a lot to the whole fairgrounds feel of the whole thing. It's awesome walking in there after events and seeing other players playing the arcade games. Next up, let's quickly talk about the rewards. With this update, each new event has its own rewards pool, and so does the new boss, but then there is also the new Cacade rewards, and even some smaller items that you can buy from vendors in the area. In total, I think there are over 80 new rewards, and most of them are pretty cool. Even the legendary weapon drops are solid, and usually these types of weapons are not very good. So I really love the approach they took with rewards for this update. There's a lot to collect, and a lot of them are actually worth getting, so hopefully in the future updates they continue to bring in rewards like these. Now there is also the new scoreboard with this update, and on here you have your normal scoreboard type rewards, but it is a solid season and there is a lot on here that I can't wait to unlock, so between this and the new event rewards, I find myself having a ton of motivation to hop on and complete challenges and events. Moving on though, we have two smaller things added with this update worth mentioning, and that is the ammo box and free cam. The ammo box is basically just a scrap box for ammo. You can place ammo inside of it and there is no weight limit so you can store as much as you want. It's a really nice thing to have and it has helped me shed some weight off my inventory so I'm really happy that that was added. Now you can't place cores in it which is kind of a bummer but it still is a nice new Fallout First feature. Free cam is another great feature and it will let you just detach the camera from your character when building. This allows you to fly around your camp and build in a really cool way. Using this, I can now reach taller places where before I would have had to jump up on the roof or build something to reach it. It's a really helpful feature and so far I find myself using it a lot. Now usually in these update review videos, I like to go over the pros and cons of the update because usually there is some good stuff and some not so good stuff with Fallout 76 updates, but honestly I had a hard time even coming up with the cons for this video. I really like everything added with this update, but with that being said I have seen some things talked about that are worth mentioning. First up, some people have said that this update is a bit too lighthearted and I guess just too wacky, and I can definitely see where they are coming from, especially when you look at the last update and compare it to this one. The last last update was our first expedition, and it took us to the pit, and here the city was ruined, the people were miserable, we had trogs and people getting tortured in these underground torture rooms, and it just had that classic dark fallout tone of people trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. But then if you look at this update, it takes us to a fair, where we play some games, pretend to be bandits against robots, and even help fix a carnival ride. It's definitely more lighthearted and fun, but personally, I don't really mind it, and I guess I would even say that I like that diversity with the content. Fallout has always sort of toyed with being dark and miserable at times, but also being fun and wacky sometimes. A prime example of this is Fallout 2. The main story is pretty serious, but some of the side quests and random encounters are really out there. So I don't really see a huge issue with Nuka World on tour, and I don't think that they went too overboard on the wacky side of things. And lastly, another thing I've seen people getting disappointed about with this update is the legendary nerf getting delayed. Originally with this update, legendary weapons were going to lose their legendary effects. For example, an explosive Gatlin Plasma was going to lose that explosive star and it would just become a normal weapon. A lot of people were super excited about this and some were not so excited. This was going to be a huge change with this update and for now it got pushed back and honestly I'm happy that it was delayed. There were some issues with it on the PTS where named legendary items were also losing their effects and I don't really think this was the best fix for OP legendary weapons in my opinion. I would have loved to see them fixed in some way rather than just removed so hopefully this delay gives them time to explore other options. So overall with this update, I think I would honestly give it an 8.5 out of 10. I really like the new boss, the events are solid, the fairgrounds are really cool to explore, and the overall atmosphere really does feel like you're at a fair. After an event is done, you will find tons of people going to the crafting benches in the center of the fair to deposit their loot or scrap some stuff and even to trade items. And you will find people just playing the arcade games and messing around waiting for the next event. The whole atmosphere is just plain fun and I really like seeing so many players hanging out in one area. The big thing that holds it back from being a higher score for me is that there is no real large quest line tied to Nuka World on tour. Sure we got the Ultrasight Titan quest line, but that was pretty short and there really wasn't much to it, so I would have loved to see a quest where maybe we have to help them settle into the area, we could have had to place some advertisement posters and train stations around the map and get some stuff to help set the fair up. 
They could have made some daily quests where we have to grab some raw food items for the fair's food vendors so they have some stuff to cook, and they could have even done a larger quest where we have to go into the Nuka Cola factory and progress through a quest line to get some things for the fair, or maybe to set up some robots to transport shipments of Nuka Cola crates back to the fairgrounds to keep it stocked up. Or maybe we could have even just went to a power station and connected the power to the fair so it could fully operate. There is a ton of potential here for some questing content, and I would have loved to see some with the update. Doing quests and exploring lore is my favorite part of the Fallout series, and I think they could have done some really neat Nuka Cola themed quests with this. But with that being said, this update was never meant to be a questing update, it was just mainly focused on the new events and the new boss, so I can't really knock off too many points for this because it definitely succeeded at its purpose. I think it was a phenomenal update, and I really like the update for what it is. And also, I do believe that this is the first time where everything on the roadmap for the year has made it into the game, so that is pretty big. In the past, usually things end up getting delayed throughout the year or just outright changed, but this year everything on the roadmap has made it, and this gives me a lot of hope for the future of the game. Going a whole year without any major content delays is awesome, and hopefully they can do it again next year. But that is pretty much going to be it for this video, so go ahead and let me know down below in the comments what you think about this update. Did you like it? Was it the best update of the year, or was it the worst update of the year? I'd love to know your thoughts on it, and I would like to say thank you so much for stopping by and watching, I really do appreciate it. And as always, I would like to give a massive thank you to all of the channel members. Robert Kennard, CRM114, Mizator, Theodore, Slappy Sauce, Anxiety Ranger, Esdeath93, King Kittens, Omniprotus, Terry Lockridge, Dalton Murphy, Victrix, Argent Deer, Shaky Hands Workshop, Axel, Kevin W, Anna S, Fallout McFly, Network Gate, Golti, Wandering Wastelander, Lanthar, Captain Awesome, Citizen Girl, Heather Henderson, Patrick Ruta, 23 Ice Fire, Jay Smith, Bowser Double Frank, Digital Aardvark, Christy Mellon Schwitz. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys, and have a great day.